An ongoing goal of mine has been to expand my knowledge of 3D printer filaments by exploring new materials on this channel. This year we tested a few with some pretty unique characteristics. In August we looked at the Fadis A4's PET carbon fiber, a high temp filament that produced stunning rigid parts. In the A4 series is another PET, but instead of carbon fiber this one contains chopped glass. The only other filament I've used with glass is Nylon G. Fadis was kind enough to provide a roll of this material for us to test out. In this video we'll cover the filament properties, what's required to print with it, and of course we'll do some printing. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. With over a decade of experience, PCBWay offers reliable, high-quality PCB prototyping and fabrication with super fast turnaround times. Bring your projects to life with CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding services. I recently ordered 20 PCBs to use for an upcoming Nerf-inspired blaster project that I've been wanting to build for years. With as few as 5 and as many as 10,000 board order quantities, PCBWay has you covered for any project, big or small. Use the link in the description to get a $5 credit towards your first order today. Since we covered the carbon fiber version of this material just a few months ago, I mainly want to look at the similarities and differences of the glass variant. For anyone interested in some comparison of PET and PETG, which was covered in that video, I'll have a link in the description. Starting with the similarities, both filaments contain 15% chopped carbon or glass. They also advertise low creep, share identical recommended printing parameters, and have the same melting temperatures. But when we get into the mechanical and even thermal properties on the material testing data, things are quite different. Looking at the provided TDS, we can see the PET glass has a slightly higher density. For melt flow index, carbon fiber has a value of 4.7, while glass is 5.3. This test heats the materials up to a set temperature, in this case 270 Celsius, and introduces a force which was 2.16 kilograms. The resulting value is how much material passed through the test die in grams during the 10 minute duration of the test. So 5.3 grams means the glass PET's melt index was 12% more than the carbon or 12% more flow. Let me know in the comments down below if there is more interest in me covering some of these different testing methods as I learn more about them myself. It's beyond the scope of this video to go through each of the different tests, but it's definitely something that I find really interesting. For determination of temperature, carbon had a higher deflection than glass. This was 112.1 Celsius versus 99.1 at 1.8 megapascals and 148.8 Celsius versus 120.3 at 0.45 megapascals. ISO 527 results have carbon fiber with a higher tensile strength of approximately 20% in X and Y. For Z, which is where the layer lines are the weakest factor, the values are near identical. Much closer than the tensile strength is the bending strength. Carbon is still the winner by 6.5% over glass. Finally, where the glass filled material really shines is with the Charpy impact strength. Here glass comes in with 16% more. For many applications, these two materials can be used interchangeably, but depending on how demanding your specific application is, these differences might be really important. One other difference that may matter to some is the color choice. Generally speaking, materials with carbon fiber will come in black. There are some slight exceptions to this, but it has mostly been true. While with glass filled materials, it is much easier and more common for them to come in a wide range of colors. For the A-Force PET, it comes in beige, orange, red, blue, gray, and black. As for printing with this filament, the requirements are identical to the carbon version. For the hot end, it prints hot at between 280 and 320 Celsius. This means you'll need an all metal hot end, and I am using the Fadis Dragonfly on my Voron switchwire. This isn't a particular high flow hot end, but it is very reliable and I'm running it on a couple of my printers. Since this filament is abrasive, you'll need either a hardened steel or other wear resistant nozzle. I'm using the Basel nozzle, which is 0.5 millimeters and made of tungsten carbide. It also has a unique internal geometry that helps to increase flow. For the extruder, this printer is running the Clockwork 2, a dual gear direct drive setup using high quality Bontech gears. Direct drive isn't a requirement, but a high quality extruder with wear resistant gears is definitely recommended. For adhesion, if possible, I'd go with a powder coated PEI bed. 
It sticks well and you won't run the risk of damaging Smooth PEI or having it potentially chip glass. If you go with another build surface, I would put down some glue stick just to act as a release agent. With this being a PET, even brand new, I recommend drying it for a few hours before printing. I use the Ibis Polyphemus dryer we recently covered, set to 60 Celsius to dry the material and kept it in there the entire time I printed. For printing temps, I went with 70 Celsius for the bed, which gave me great adhesion. The range given for hot end temps is 280 to 320 Celsius. I went with 290 for a couple of reasons. First, that is the hard cap for a lot of printers out there. If not because of a firmware lock, many of these standard thermistors used become inaccurate north of 300 Celsius and can even fail. If you're running something like a PT100, you can certainly print higher if your hothead supports it, but it is not a requirement. I raised the retraction from the default 0.8 to 1.2 and ran a quick pressure advance test. Just like the carbon version, the product page says cooling fan off. However, as long as you have a good first layer, you can absolutely run a fan and will get better results on overhangs and bridging with it. I set the fan threshold from 20 to 50% and had no issues. Lastly, for speeds, the recommendation is between 30 and 90 millimeters per second. This really comes down to the temperature you print at, your hardware's flow capabilities, as well as your ability to cool this filament. Since I was only printing at 290 Celsius, I went with a max speed of 100 millimeters a second for infill and inner walls. Everything else was 80 millimeters per second and my extrusion was super consistent. I don't doubt that I could have scaled it up from there and still gotten really good results, but I was just so happy with the print quality I was getting, I decided to leave it at that. I commented about how nice the carbon PET looked in that video, but I gotta say the glass may actually top it. The chopped glass helps to blend layers and gives the part a uniform texture that almost makes you forget it was printed layer by layer. The parts are super stiff and even with the largest part I printed, there are zero signs of warping. I would largely say that after I dialed in my first layer, printing with this material was really simple. Much like with the carbon, due to the price point of this filament, you wouldn't want to just print with it for no reason. But if you have a demanding application, needing temperature resistance and impact strength, this seems like an excellent candidate. And that has been the Fetus A-Force PET glass fiber. That is a mouthful. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of your questions about this filament. If you do have any additional questions, be sure to let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer. As always, if I don't have the answer to your question, I have no problem reaching out to the manufacturer directly to try to get that answer for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.